It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. He is a true-blooded Cebuano, having been born and raised here in the Queen and historical city of the South. He took his graduate studies where he has a doctorate in church history at the Gregorian Pontifical University in Rome. Of late, from 2013 to October of 2020, he served as the Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines. Last year, he was asked to come back to Cebu by Archbishop Jose Palma to help oversee the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines celebration. We are truly privileged to hear his talk on this today. Yes, why celebrate the 500 years of Christianity? Our distinguished speaker will celebrate his 30th year as a priest this June. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, please help me welcome Reverend Father Marvin S. Mejia. Good day to everyone. This is Reverend Father Marvin S. Mejia of the Archdiocese of Cebu. I am truly happy to share with you about the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, or 500 YOC. It is an event worth celebrating, the gift of Christian faith to a nation, the Filipino people. It is fitting and proper that we Filipinos living here in the Philippines and abroad, across the world, will understand and reflect on the meaning of this momentous and joyous event, which we will celebrate from April 4, 2021, Easter Sunday this year, to April 14, 2021. 22. One fundamental question that comes to mind is why 500 years of Christianity? Why 500 YOC? 500 years ago, Christianity arrived on our shores. The seed of Christian faith was planted in the hearts of the natives of this archipelago the incipients of a religious consciousness that is still ever growing through all the succeeding years, the succeeding centuries. There were two specific events that happened, marking a new beginning in the faith life experience of a people. Though still vague in its purpose and unclear in its promise, these religious happenings that occurred five centuries ago will result in blossoming of the Christian faith in the Philippines. On March 16, 1521, the Armada de Molucas, the Spanish na naval expedition led by Ferdinand Magellan that was in search of the westerly route to the Spice Islands, reached the Philippine Islands. In the ensuing days after their arrival, the Spaniards navigated from where they had gained foothold and arrived at an island where the first Easter Sunday Mass was celebrated in the Philippines. It was March 31, 1521. In the same afternoon of the same day, a cross was planted on the top of the highest mountain in the area for everyone to see and to adore, marking it to be a place under the protection of the Spanish crown. Two weeks later, April 14, 1521, the natives of Cebu were baptized. In the morning of that Sunday, the king, with 50 of his men, were baptized by the chaplain of Magellan's fleet. The king was named Carlos, the name of the king of Spain at that time. After lunch, 
the queen was baptized with 40 women. She was given the name Juana, the same name of the king's mother. That day alone, 800 men, women, and children received baptism as recorded by Antonio Pigafetta, the chronicler of the expedition. Thus, 500 years ago, a meeting of two peoples occurred, the natives of the islands in the Far East and the Europeans of the Iberian Peninsula. It was an appointed time in the history of two cultures when the indigenous meets the foreign. It was an encounter between the Aboriginal faith of the natives and the Spaniards with their Judeo-Christian tradition. With their baptism, the native Filipinos or Cebuanos receive a distinctive character, the Christian character, that causes transformation not just of the individual but the nation as well. With the celebration of the sacrament of baptism, a people become initiated in the Christian faith. Though it took some time for our forefathers to experience the full meaning of what they have received. But we, Filipinos living here and now, through the centuries, five centuries, as baptized members of the church, have become more conscious of that wonderful gift of faith to be shared with others. This is a cause of rejoicing, a great jubilee. During this jubilee year, in a special way, our eyes gaze on the Santo Nino de Cebu, the oldest religious icon in the Philippines. Queen Juana begged for the image of the Santo Nino, and it was gifted to her. After the Queen's baptism in the afternoon of that same day, April 14, 1521, she begged the Spaniards to give her the image of a small child made of wood so she could replace the images of their idols. And the Santo Nino was given. When they met Queen Juana, Magellan spoke about the image of the Santo Nino and he reminded that this would replace the images of idols as it was a remembrance or remembrancer of the Son of God. The Queen promised that she would do this and she would take good care of the image. And this image of the Santo Nino still exists until today at the Basilica Minore del Santo Nino under the auspices of the Augustinian priest. The Santo Nino was asked for by Queen Juana, and this was given to her. There is something beautiful about this child portrayed in that image, which prompted the early Cebuanos who became Christians to ask, to beg for it. This is beautifully expressed in the Gosos, the song. Devotees of Santo Nino are very familiar with and know how to sing. The first line of this hymn is Batubalani sa gugma sa daang tao palanga Magnet of love beloved by people of old. It is really true that the Holy Child depicted in this wooden image brings us closer to God just like a magnet with the power to attract metal and people in the olden times since the birth of the son of god more than 2000 years ago and the natives of cebu in april 1521 were attracted to him even we up to this day the santo nino is loved by the cebuanos and the entire filipino people who are believers here in our country and abroad there are truly a lot of devotees of Santonino. 
And our reverence to the child Jesus is not just individual worship, but definitely collective, communal. That is why we in the Philippines are given special permission by Rome that the third Sunday of January is the celebration of the feast of the Santo Nino. In fact, Filipinos abroad celebrate during this time with the permission of their priest or parish priest. What is the difference between 500 YOC and the 1965 fourth centennial of the Christianization of the Philippines? We find the answer in the joint pastoral letter of the fourth centenary of the evangelization of the Philippines, signed with the late Holy R. Cardinal Rosales, Archbishop of Cebu, President of the Catholic Welfare Organization, CBCP's uh, predecessor, Administrative Council on February 2, 1964. According to that statement, a chapel was improvised where the image could be venerated and there, Frey Ordinita celebrated a mass of thanksgiving for the success of their voyage. Thus was inaugurated the formal evangelization of the Philippines under the patronage of the holy name of Jesus, our Santo Niño Disciple. The 500 years of Christianity marks the beginning of the Christian faith, the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines when the first mass and the first baptism were celebrated. Christianization of the Philippines was the process when missionaries came to the Philippines and to preach the gospel. They celebrated the sacraments, they constructed churches and built schools and other cultural centers. Christianization is the formal evangelization. The theme for the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines is gifted to give. Words most fitting for the preparation and celebration of such momentous event. Gifted to give is a proclamation of God's goodness and generosity that all that we are and all that we have do not ultimately come from our own selves. They come from God. It is a humble acknowledgement that it is from God that we receive the gift of faith. While our faith leads us to our own salvation, we are called to share it with others. Our faith is the fountain of our religiosity and piety, but it is also the force that impels us the power that moves us to go to others. With our presence and our service, our ministry, we share this wonderful gift by reaching out to others in love and by giving them hope of the abiding presence of our Heavenly Father in this imperfect world. We are all gifted the gift of faith not only for our own, but for others as well. We must call to mind that the 500 years celebration, 500 years of Christianity celebration, has long been prepared by the Philippine Church. Its inception can be traced back to the initiative of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, expressed in a pastoral statement entitled, Live Christ, Share Christ, Looking Forward to Our 500th, issued on July 12, 2012. In that document, signed by then CBCB President Archbishop Jose S. Palma, Archbishop of Cebu, the Philippine bishops envisioned to embark on a nine-year spiritual journey that will culminate with the great jubilee of 2021. It is a grace-filled event of blessings for the church. Why October 21, 2012? On October 21, 2012, the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, added another Filipino to the canon of saints of the church, our very own Visayan proto-martyr, Pedro Calungso, who gave his life for the faith, 
On the morning of April 2, 1672 in Guam, the canonization of Pedro Calungso took place under the brilliant light of the 50th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council on October 11, that same year. This same day also marks the 20th anniversary of the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the commencement of the year of faith that will end on November 24, 2013. These events take place during the celebration of the 13th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops that was held in Rome from October 7 to 28, 2012 on the theme, the new evangelization for the transmission of the Christian of faith. The starting date of October 11, 2012 also marks the 20th anniversary of the publication of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, a text promulgated by St. John Paul II with a view to illustrating for all the faithful the power and beauty of the faith. And this document, an authentic fruit of the Second Vatican Council, was requested by the extraordinary synod of bishops in 1985 as an instrument at the service of catechesis and it was produced in collaboration with all the bishops of the Catholic Church. Moreover, the theme of the General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops that the Holy Father convoked for October 2012 is the new evangelization for the transmission of the Christian faith. And so, the nine-year preparation began for the 500 YOC in 2013, the year of the integral faith formation. Followed in the following years with 2014, Year of the Laity, 2015, Year of the Poor, 2016, Year of the Family and the Eucharist, 2017, Year of the Parish as Ecclesial Communion, 2018, Year of the Clergy and the Consecrated Persons, 2019, Year of the Youth, last year, 2020, Year of Interreligious Dialogue, Ecumenism, and the indigenous people. And now, 2021, year of Missio Ad Gentis. The ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical jurisdictions in the Philippines, our local churches, the archdioceses and dioceses with the support of the different commissions of the CBCP, planned and implemented programs and activities considering a tripartite aspect of formation, celebration, and legacy. All these are leading to the 500 years of Christianity, year-long celebration, starting from April 4, 2021, this year, the commemoration of the fifth centenary of the first baptism in the Philippines to April 22, 2022, next year, the culmination of the planned National Mission Congress in time also of the commemoration of the first baptism. This will be held in Cebu. The bishops of the Philippines see that all these events, the nine-year preparation and the 500 YOC will form part of what is envisioned by the Universal Church as the new evangelization. In fact, for the Philippine Church, these years leading to the 500 YOC will be considered as the era of new evangelization in the country that calls all the Filipino be faithful to deepen our faith, to believe in the gospel message and go forward to proclaim the gospel. It calls everyone to be evangelized and then go forth to evangelize. In a special way, the new evangelization is focused on reproposing the gospel to those who have experienced a crisis of faith. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI called for the reproposing of the gospel to those regions awaiting the first evangelization and to those regions 
where the roots of Christianity are deep, but who have experienced a serious crisis of faith due to secularization. It invites us all to renew our relationship with Jesus Christ and His Church. It is the mission, therefore, for all of us who receive the gift, the gift of faith, to take part in the new evangelization, the Church's own mission, the mission of Christ Himself. In its precise sense, evangelization in the Missio Agentis directed to those who do not know Christ, Yet in a wider sense, it is used to describe ordinary pastoral work, missio and extra. It involves pastoral outreach to those who no longer practice the Christian faith. Hence, new evangelization is primarily addressed to the baptized in the Christian West who are experiencing a new existential and cultural situation which in fact has imperiled their faith and their witness. This is a situation which Pope Benedict XVI has described as an interior desert which has virtually eliminated any question of God. This is a pastoral situation that calls on the faithful, all the baptized, here and abroad to participate in overcoming the separation of the gospel from life and reconstructing in the everyday activities of the home, work, and society. The unity of life which finds its inspiration and strength to realize it fully in the gospel. In the context of our 500 YOC celebration in the Philippines. This era of new evangelization will consist of four areas or dimensions of concerns. Concrete activities are therefore open for us as we celebrate 500 YOC or prepare and celebrate 500 YOC for us. First, the intensification of promoting Monsieur Agentes in all our communities, among our lay people, our priests and seminarians, and men and women in consecrated life. Post World War II, Roman pontiffs, the popes, have insisted that the church in the Philippines has a clear missionary vocation given by divine providence by reasons of history, of geographical location, and the presence of Filipino Christians in many regions of the world in all of human history it is today that the number of those who have never met Christ or heard his gospel is perhaps at his highest level how imperative and how urgent it is then that Jesus and his gospel be made known and his truth and way of life be witnessed to by us to whom 500 years ago the Christian faith was given as gift. Secondly, in our part of the world, all evangelization must keep in mind the imperative of bringing good news to the poor. Populus evangelizantur. This holds true of all evangelization, but it has a special relevance and urgency for us and our Filipino missionary vocation. We are still a long way from the vision to become, in truth, a church of the poor, committed to struggle to bring down poverty among our people, committed to striving to do all we can to help bring about a civilization of justice and love, to become truly a church of the poor. Thirdly, we must reach out to the many Catholics whose faith knowledge and faith practice have been largely eroded and even lost. We have to reach out to former Catholics who have drifted from the church due to scandals, hurts, and resolved 
confusions and doubts, as well as to Catholics who have in fact turned to other religions and religious traditions. We must counteract the creeping effects of glorified moral relativism and secularism now eating up our people. We must protect the youth from the attraction of individualistic sects that ignored all communitarian norms. And this leads to the last aspect. Lastly, we must renew our attention and zeal toward the awakening, fuller formation and an animation of young people and youth groups in both urban and rural settings. The Philippines is a country of the young. We cannot insist enough how important and significant, how urgent and crucial the evangelization of our youth. This indeed is a priority pastoral task. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have many planned activities, programs and projects in celebration of the 500 years of Christianity. But we must never forget to consider these four areas of concern at the present moment of our ecclesial life. The question now is, what is my personal involvement in the 500 YOC celebration? The Archdiocese of Cebu will be launching a campaign targeting the individual and Christian communities to which he or she belongs, the parish. Binunyagan Ako is the campaign. I am baptized. It's a campaign of the Archdiocese of Cebu for all believers to own one's baptism in view of the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity, 500 YOC in the Philippines. It is significant that every Filipino faithful looks back to his or her own story of faith that all begins on the day of baptism. Remembering engenders a grateful heart that opens the hands to reach out others in love, transforming the world. Binunyagan ako, I am baptized, is a thankful recall of a beautiful past, a joyful celebration of Christian life, and a generous movement towards the transformation of life and world. The goal of this Binunyagan ako campaign is formative, memorable, and transformative missionary way of celebrating the 500 years of Christ. And we have set specific objectives. One is really to provide a basic formation program on the meaning of a sacrament that is adaptable to be given to various members of the community. That is the clergy, the religious, all consecrated people, the laity, including various sectors of society, over a period of one year. The second specific objective of this campaign is to propose celebratory activities commemorating one's baptism during the years 2021-2022. And lastly, the objective is to inspire the faithful to courageously proclaim their being baptized in graphic expressions and concrete lines of action. The launching of this Bilunyagan Ako or I Am Baptized campaign in the Archdiocese of Cebu will be on April 14, 2021. That's the 500th anniversary of the first mass, of first baptism in Cebu. And this campaign will culminate on April 2022. This is our concrete uh, lines of action that will happen in the parishes and local communities as we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity. Today, the world needs people who proclaim and testify that it is Christ Jesus who teaches the art of living, the way of true happiness, because He Himself 
is the path of life. People who first of all keep their own gaze fixed on Jesus, the Son of God. The word of proclamation must always be immersed in an intense relationship with Him, in the intense life of prayer. Today's world needs people who speak to God so as to be able to speak of God. And we must always remember that Jesus did not redeem the world with beautiful words or ostentatious means, but with His suffering and His death. We are blessed with the gift of faith. May our 500 years of Christianity celebration be an occasion to deepen our Christian faith received at baptism. And may we become more generous in sharing this same faith with others.